You mean the cop killer? He's made our papers yet? Yeah, but I'm not so sure it's a he. It could be a they or a them. All I know is, who's ever behind this thing followed me here from San Francisco. Uh, Sam's a sergeant with the San Francisco Police Department. Yeah, but I thought this killer's M.O. was that he only shot at policemen in uniform. Four of them, apparently at random, until tonight. Isn't this killer supposed to be sending notes? Did you get one? No, not notes. Poems with numbers that in some way relate to the time and a place in a killing. I got mine yesterday. My number was 42. Oh my God, 42. Sam! Sam! I came here to investigate the death of a good friend. I'm not leaving. I know why you're in town, Mr. Tanner. So let me make this just as clear as possible. There's a killer out there. And he's killing cops. And I've got a thousand men who are so uptight, I worry about some innocent person reaching into his pocket for a package of cigarettes and getting blown out of his socks by some nervous rookie. What I do not need is a private eye with a vendetta in my nosing around, making my men even more nervous. Why would you think a thing like that? I leave the funeral, you leave the funeral. We come to the station, you come to the station. We're leaving, you're waiting. Purely coincidental. I like you better than your little red T-bird. so long. We've only been here five minutes. Right. So what takes you so long? I stopped to hang up my clothes. Let me ask you something. Are you going to wear them again? Yeah. Before you send them to the cleaners? No. So why'd you hang them up? <sighs> Hi, 
Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. You did it again, didn't you, son? It's wrong, Derek. Go back to the hospital. Let the doctor help you. Your mother's right, Derek. Come back to the hospital. You won't have to kill anymore. No. I want to kill. That's why I fooled you, so you'd let me go. You thought, you thought I forgave them for murdering Daddy, didn't you? I wasn't murdered, Derek. I was killed in the line of duty. You were killed by your own partner. Derek, it was an accident. Was it? Was it? Then why did you stick your head in the oven, huh? Because you couldn't live with the knowledge of how Daddy died, and so you left me alone. You left me totally alone. You're not going to bring them back, Derek. They're dead. Columbus Street is dead. You're wrong, Doctor. You're all wrong. <laughs> Columbus Street is very much alive. And it's coming more and more to life every time one of these cops oh, dies. Don't do it again. <laughs> I think we're ready for a C. But who? Hmm? Is it Cooper? Or Cr Cranston? Cully? Carter? Which one of you gentlemen would like to be my C and die? Huh? Do I have a volunteer? Just relieve that nice old gentleman of his wallet. Old gentleman? Wallet? I have no idea what you mean, Officer Hunt. I'm simply on my way home. Oh, you moved? No. I still live in the same place. Really? That's three miles in the other direction. Girls, give me a break. I'm only trying to earn a living. You know the department frowns on pickpockets. Mini pickpocket. Girls, you know me. I lift a wallet, take out $10, put it back. 99% of my clients never even know their pocket's been picked. She almost makes it sound honest. It doesn't have to be honest. It's artistic. Oh. oh. Would you like to come tell my dad how artistic it is? The judge? The same. I'd hate it. Good. Where's your ex-boyfriend? Which one? Dixon, the bearded wonder. I ain't no snitch. Dottie, the judge. But I am a woman scorned. He's living on a boat near the Grotto Nine restaurant on the wharf. I hear he's hanging out with a waitress named Boo Boo. Thanks. Don't mention it. Uh, the wallet? Huh? Oh, sure. See anything you like before I uh, put it back? Dottie, just put it back, okay? Need a lift back to your car? I thought you said you weren't following us. 
No, I just said it was a coincidence. Come on, hop in. Uh, point of information, are you two on duty or off? I mean, are you in uniform or out? We're in the Special Enforcement Division, which means that we wear whatever it takes to solve a case. From flag jackets to bikinis. Two are starting to grow on me. Watch out, here comes the fungus line. Like a fungus. <gasps> Okay, truce, all right? I need information and I got nobody to talk to. So why don't you tell me what you know? Maybe I can help. I mean, you never can tell. Maybe you'll like having me around. Got a good sales pitch, cowboy. Thank you, ma'am. But no sale. He'd make a good cop. There he is. That's him. All right, Dixon, freeze! Go harder! Stop! Hold it! Please! Take a lead. Thought you'd never ask, cowboy.
Now, who are you working for? I don't know, I swear. But I said, tell me who you're working for. I'm telling you. I don't know. It's this guy. He calls me on the phone. He leaves the money in my mailbox. This time he told me to set up a cop. That's all I know. I swear, I swear. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you're all right. Hannah, looks like I'm just going to have to issue a permit for that gun after all. See you later. Well, anybody got an idea? Well, I'd say we were right back to square one. Look, without the... Risk of sounding redundant, I'd like to ask one more time. Can you please give me everything you got on this case so far? Well, since tonight seems to have changed Captain Turner's mind, we'll pick you up in the morning, take you down to the station, and have Turner get Collie to brief you personally on the entire case, okay? Now that we're going to be working together, uh, when do you two wear the bikinis? <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> Hear this. You're gonna love it. You just love it. Officer Carter, welcome to the club. can't even establish a connection between our own men, how the hell do we connect them to the murderer? Well, what about the numbers the killer put in the poems? Take your pick. We've tried everything from license plates to astrological charts. He keeps adding numbers and we keep punting. We're working on phone numbers now. Can I have a copy of those numbers? Yep. Captain said to tell you everything. Got a psychological profile on the killer? Uh, paranoia. Trouble with authority figures. Probably spent some time in confinement. Prison? Or a mental institution. It's hard to tell. Maybe even a closet. Holly! Hello, Dan. Captain? Somebody just dropped a tape off in our mail slot. The new number is six.
Responding. That's the car. Just heard. How is she? If lady's got a hard head. She's gonna be fine. Thank God. Really? Looks, Captain. If it's uh, all the same to you. Oh, Collie, uh... Collie, your reputation is safe with us. All right, the girls will still think that you hate them. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hi. 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 Don't hide me, Blackwell. Where? Where is it written? Two partners go in after the same suspect together. Be in my office tomorrow, 8 a.m. We'll talk about it. Captain? Tanner? What's that all about? He's, um, Ego. Get some rest, guys. Dan? So, how are you feeling? Like I want a hot tub and a good night's sleep. You got it, lady. We'll drop you at your hotel on the way back. Okay, maybe afterwards we can have some dinner? What about me? If you need your rest, we'll bring you a doggy bag. <laughs> you got a tux? For dinner? No, my mother's cocktail party tomorrow afternoon. I wasn't invited. Well, you are now. I'll get a tux. Nurse Webster, report to Dr. Madden. Okay, I'll change clothes and pick you up at your place in an hour. Good day.
Are you a gambler, Miss Hunt? Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, then, here's to the odds. Huh? The odds. What odds? <laughs> the odds that I'd be uh, having dinner with a girl in San Francisco who a week ago I busted in Las Vegas who I thought was a hooker. <laughs> to the odds. Because you never know. No, you don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about you. <laughs> I had a typical American upbringing. My mother is high society. My father's a judge. My schooling was private. My frustration immense. Yeah, mine too. But it still doesn't figure. What? You being a cop? I... I had a friend. She's a kindergarten teacher. She flew into San Francisco one night and... She walked into the parking lot and she was raped. Somebody said that if there had been just one policeman in the area, it, it might not have happened. <laughs> so I applied for the job the next day. <laughs> now, Britt, on the other hand, has always wanted to be America's first female police chief. <laughs> We'd like to start with a bottle of Chablis. May I see some ID, please? Uh, like what? Driver's license or a birth certificate. Uh, I don't have those, but I swear I'm 21. Look, I just worked down at the Van Shoe store down the street. I have my social security card. I'm sorry, sir, but a social security card doesn't have your age. Look, I'm oh 21. God. I swear it. I'm sorry, what? no wine. Dump your purse on the table. Again? Dump your purse. <laughs> Take a look. I don't get it. The killer is trying to tell us something with numbers. Now, he warned every police officer he murdered with a poem containing a single digit except one. Sam Allman, number 42. You think the number sequence is somebody's social security number? Take a look. It's the only card with a double digit. What do you think? I mean, it's worth a try. If we hurry, we could feed the information into the computer tonight, shoot it off to Washington. We should have an answer by tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, but what do you think? I think it's crazy. So? So let's go check it out. Okay. Thanks, pal. All right. Perfect. It's perfect, isn't it, Mother? <laughs> my B, the completion of my revenge as a woman. Uh, they're going to be expecting a note, aren't they? But there isn't one coming, is there? Because you, Officer Blackwell, are my last. My Columbus. Mother, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. A tuxedo. This is going to be a formal killing. Why is your mother having a formal party in the middle of the afternoon? Because she's taking everyone to the opera tonight. No. Oh. Aren't you going to ask which one? What difference does it make? All I know is you can't leave until the fat lady dies. Casey, Dan. Captain? Ready? Almost. Collie's on his way up from the computer room. The report on the numbers came in from Washington. Where's Britt? She's already at the plane. Ah. Your social security theory paid off. What? How? Ah. Number 651-42-2893 belongs to Mark Razio. Mark Razio? That was 12 years ago. 
What was 12 years ago? Isaiel's death. He was killed in a shootout on Columbus Street. It was an accident. His wife committed suicide a year later. There? Caused his son Derek to flip out. He was institutionalized until eight months ago. Who was Mark Razio? A police officer killed by one of our own men. You know Derek's address? Yes. Let's go. Jennifer Hatfield showed up at the luncheon wearing the most horrendous chiffon dress, if you want to call it a dress at all. And I had to sit next to her all afternoon. Well, every time Marie Vanderbilt looked my way, I nearly... I wonder what the uh, topic of gossip is this week. Probably Casey and me. Oh, not likely. Casey's profession is Charlotte's best kept secret. Uh, she refers to our daughter as being involved in city government. <laughs> Oh, Britannia, how nice of you to come. How is your charming mother? Oh, she's fine. Still in Sausalito at the artist colony. <laughs> how quaint. What a pity she couldn't attend. I don't think she was invited. Really? Oh, how unfortunate. <laughs> uh, where's Cassandra? With the best-looking man in Vegas. <laughs> Oh, Marie. Marie, darling. Oh, I'm so glad Excuse you came. Excuse me, Miss Oh, thank you. Oh. Yeah, excuse me. Sure. team up here right away. What are those? Columbus with the first letter of the dead officer's last name. It's next. This is Casey. Let me talk to my dad. She left about a half an hour ago. Where are you? Your mother's very disappointed. I, I'm sorry, Dad. I, I, I gotta go. Casey, Casey, don't hang. I'm. I gotta go, Dad. I'm sorry. She's not there. But he's telling us where she is, Columbus Street, where his father was killed. Street. But where, 
her on Columbus Street. We'll find her. We've got to find her. Get in, I said. Come on, come on, come on. We, uh... Don't you understand? They murdered my parents. They murdered both of them! Those cops deserve to die.
Shall we go try our luck? Why not? I feel lucky. Let's go. Got your money? No. Uh, no. <laughs> well, how are we going to play poker if you don't have any money? I've This is the greatest city in the world. You're talking about Las Vegas. I think it's a toss-up. What? Vegas versus San Francisco. I mean, Vegas is gambling and glamour and flash and dash. And San Francisco, on the other hand, mm -hmm. is sophistication, glamour, and flash and dash. <laughs> I think it's a toss-up. What do you think? I think you should work for the State Department. <laughs> Relax. But we're cops. Not in this town, you're not. Check it out. Man, what are you doing, man? All right. Come on, Mo. Come on. Well, it sure is good to be home, I'll tell you. I just love Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs>